Your Sims 4 builds are very, very ugly, but that's okay. I can help you. Today, we're going over my top 10 build tips. I feel like most of you are going to already know this, but for those of you who don't, you open up the cheat window on PC, it's Control shift c and type in bb.moveobjects space on, hit enter. With this cheat, you can freely place objects. That means you can place objects on top of each other and it doesn't matter. If you hold the Alt key, you can freely move it around off the grid and you can also rotate objects smoothly whilst holding the Alt key. Using the square bracket key, keys on your keyboard you can resize objects to be very very big or very very small and if you hold control you can use the nine key to raise an object off the ground and you can use the zero key to make it lower when placing an object if you hold the shift key when you place it it allows you to place a duplicate version of the object so now we have the basics out of the way Kitchen cabinets in The Sims 4 have a huge array of different uses other than just using them as a kitchen cabinet and to do that we click on the colour swatch button, make sure automatic counter placement is off and you have access to all of these different kinds of options which can be used for a huge variety of different kinds of purposes. One of my favourite ones is to use a bathroom cabinet because let's be honest we all probably use this exact same medicine cabinet in all of our Sims 4 builds. We can delete that one, choose another one you like and size it down. You can make it really small if you want to and you have a brand new bathroom cabinet that you can use and it just looks and feels a little bit different to using the same old medicine cabinet from the base game. Another great purpose is just to make it look like general storage or a side table. This specific one from the base game vault wall cabinets is really really good for that. You could place two larger ones just like this and then as I said before using the nine key to raise up up, you can place different objects on it or to be funky you could do one in a half size one in the taller size and again just randomly placing some objects on here you can see it just makes something that looks more unique you can also use this method to build a tv unit you can see here i used two cabinets with two bookshelves and some cabinets at the top and it just helps to make this tv look a little bit nicer than just having it on a stand on the wall you can also use them to create custom reading nooks so if you create a tiny any two by two space like this here add a cabinet on the floor and make sure it's added on like both sides just like this delete the two walls here i know this looks horrendous right now <laughs> you gotta trust me search for an ottoman i like to use this base game one here and using controller nine bring it up and then you can place it here and you can have a little play around adding just a couple of decorations i've added pillows a shelf these like what are they called horizontal wall lines back to it another plant you can really fit it out and just make it look really cute and if you've just got like an empty bit of space just like this here sometimes using one of the taller cabinets you can just place a couple down and it just helps to fill the emptiness in some of your sims rooms by adding just a little functionless clutter object Making your own DIY objects in The Sims 4 is very fun. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you some very basic ones. First up, we may as well start with bathroom cabinets. Let's be honest, we all use this same bathroom shelf in The Sims 4 and it can get a little bit stale after a while. So instead of using this, we're going over to surfaces and then displays. Now, if you just have the base game, what you can do is you can grab this shelf here or you can use this base game shelf size down and moved up two or three times but what I personally like to use if you own dream home decorator or high school years you can use one of these two boxes like this and using this you can actually create your own custom shelving units which I just think is really fun but I personally like the high school years one because you can create a bit more of a unique look so I'm placing this board here with two extra ones here changing the color to fit my vibe and now what we can do is go into bathroom clutter it doesn't matter what packs you have you can just fill it with any old random bathroom clutter it doesn't matter like specifically what you're placing down I just personally feel like using this instead of the basic bathroom cabinet it just adds a little bit of an extra layer of depth to your sims builds and you can create some more unique things another one I have for you is curtain rods so adding curtains can be sometimes very 
very annoying, especially if you've got a big open space like this with loads of walls. If I added all of these curtains along here, obviously this would cover the entire set of windows and it doesn't look very realistic. But at the exact same time, if I only have two on the edge, then we've got this area here that's missing, which doesn't really make sense. So what I like to do is using any curtains, you don't have to specifically use these ones, bring them to the correct height. And then what I like to use is to go into the shelves and using this base game shelf here, you can place it all the way along the curtains. So starting with just over the main curtain here, using the alt key, you can freely place these all the way around. And what it does is it creates the illusion that the curtains just wrap around. This is one of my personal favorite DIY objects because it creates the illusion that the curtain's supposed to wrap around, but it still leaves you with some free space. Another thing that I like to do is take this base game bathroom caddy and literally just place it inside a shower. And now it looks like it's supposed to be there. Another classic one is to take the kitchen sink, grab a bathroom towel like this and place it just over the sink and combine it together. Another DIY object I like to make is custom fences. If you have an open staircase just like this, go into half walls, replace the fence itself with a half wall and you can use small windows just like this and you can place them over the half wall and it creates the illusion that you've got like this really nice modern fence that's kind of going around the top of your sims build. I mean I literally chose like this old fashioned horrible base game build <laughs> but if you're building a modern house you could do something like this and I just think it looks really really cool. There are literally so many DIY objects that you can make. The best place to look I would say is TikTok because there's a lot of hacks on there. Sometimes I think it's good to use an object for something other than what it's supposed to be used for. In The Sims 4 Get Together, we got a couple of different bedroom closets that you can use. This specific one I love using, but you can use any of them for a whole variety of purposes. I've used one here in the dining room and it just creates the illusion that you've just got a little cupboard in your dining room. Again here, I've actually placed one in the kitchen and it creates the illusion of a kitchen pantry. You could even place one like in the main hallway and it kind of acts like a little cupboard, I don't know, like where you store your shoes or something. I think they really help to fill the void when you've just got a big empty open space and you're like, what do I do with it? Chuck a closet in there. Another great one is urns. Those things that people's dead people's ashes go into. Who said this was an urn? For it is actually a cookie jar. <laughs> Just because in the game it's technically labelled as an urn, it doesn't have to be, it can be a cookie jar. The dine out pack came with this object called unfulfilled floor sign, which is literally just a floor sign. Not anymore, this floor sign is in fact a nice modern garden fence. Literally, don't be afraid to do the most bizarre things. This cardboard box, which came with dream home decorator, is now actually a modern sink, as I just placed this modern sink in inside of it. These fluffy towels, not fluffy towels anymore for they are in fact a footrest for my living room. Please do not be afraid to go all out there. In fact, I once even turned an entire coffee table into a house in this game. Just because something says it's used for something, that doesn't mean you can't use it for something else. So I'm going to teach you basically how to clutter Sims 4 builds. Now, when you go to clutter, the thing I like to do is go over to decorations and starting from the bottom, misc, go through all of these different categories, cluttering one by one. The biggest mistake I see people make is cluttering one room at a time. The problem with that is the actual item sorting in the game doesn't sort by one room at a time. So what I would instead do is go through each individual object at a time. If you're like me and unfortunately have every single pack, this is very, very hard. I would literally go over every object. So the first object that comes up is sun cream. Maybe I would place sun cream on my bathroom sink. Next up we have toothpaste and a soap dish that I might want to place onto here. As we're scrolling through, I think, oh, we've got a, a wicker basket. That would look really, really nice in the living room right next to the sofa, maybe just like this. Move a couple objects along. Oh, a toy 
toilet plunger. So we go back into the bathroom, size it down because it's huge, put it by the toilet and then keep going along. Oh, we got some candles back into the living room and I'll place those just somewhere on here. The very next object is an ironing board in this specific house. Maybe I'll throw it into the upstairs bathroom. And then the next object, oh, a laundry hamper. So I'll put this in one of the bedrooms. Instead of cluttering room by room, go through each single individual object at a time, looking through them and then adding the object where necessary because this way it's a lot quicker and easier and you're not endlessly searching for specific objects. Instead, you're just moving around as you're going along, seeing which kind of objects could fit into your individual rooms and then placing them accordingly. The next cluttering tip I have for you is free placing on counters. So the main room where we're going to be doing this is the kitchen. Cluttering a kitchen can be difficult because I can have all of these objects here, but I can only place two. And then if I try and place more of the move objects onto it clips and I can't necessarily place all these objects on the same counter. So what we do, every single object that you want to place, pop it on the counter, move the counter out of the way, and then holding the alt key, you can move the object back into the place where you want it to go. And because we've got the move objects on cheat on, that's what allows us to do it whilst being able to retain the same position. And then all we do is move the counter back in. And now we've put all of these objects onto here. You can do the exact same thing with the oven. So if you've got this cooking pot that comes with the cottage living pack, you can place it on a counter first and then freely move it over to the stove itself. Another really great one I love is shelves. Because the default placement on shelves is kind of sparse, you can't really put that much stuff on there. So instead, I'm going to place every single object that I want to place on here. And then again, using the alt key, you can actually just drag it all across. And then it gives you a lot more freedom in terms of where you place objects. And as you can see, like you can really clutter it up. Now, some things, they might be a little bit too big to automatically place on a shelf. And if you use a nine key to raise things up, sometimes the objects just don't align and they're kind of half levitating. This is where you use one of these boxes. They really come in handy. You can place a plant like this in a box move the box so it aligns with the shelf. And then again, using the alt key, you can just drag it over. If you only have the base game, the next best thing is to use this towel rack. And sometimes you can actually place objects on this towel rack. It doesn't work in the exact same way, but it works mostly in the same way too. And you can do this for any object, basically. Another thing I like to use this for is a desk. If you want to clutter up a PC desk, it's very hard finding room to put all the clutter because again the game just won't let you place too many things so again chuck every single object that you want onto the desk moving the desk half out of the way so it's not totally clipping and then you can use the alt key and just freely place all of these things you have to go in blind so you might have to do it in two parts because sometimes you might place things in the wrong place but freely moving things around like this and then you can place the table back and it just makes it look a lot more cluttered bigger is not always better well <laughs> I can think of a couple of situations where I would say bigger is better. But in the context of Sims 4 building, take your mind out of the gutter, smaller is always better. This little dining room I made, for example, is very, very cramped. Not every single house you build has to be a big, open, spacious, modern build. Sometimes these smaller cramped spaces look a lot cuter and it allows you to make it look a lot more detailed without having to put too many objects in. I also make this small little, I call it a library, but it's more like a little reading nook where you can look outside, has a little sofa. There's not actually that much decoration in here, but because the room is so small, it looks like there is. This specific bedroom I made here is very, very small and it doesn't have that much clutter, but because the room is so small, it looks cluttered enough. This is a house that I've made for the Realm of Magic World, a kooky little haunted house or magical house. Now the downstairs here, it's very, very tiny. This big table barely fits 
fits in here. In fact, nothing barely fits in this house, but because it's small, it gives you this limitation of having to clutter carefully. And it basically means that less is more. The less clutter objects that you use, it looks like you've got more in there because it's such a small space. Another thing I'd like to actually point out to you is that you don't have to use the entire lot. This is the pancakes house in The Sims 4, just the base game standard one. But as you can see, the backyard is only using this small area. It isn't using the entire larger build. And in fact, if I just wanted to bulldoze this entire lot, I could build a smallish, I'm not building a whole house, but I could build, for example, just a small little house like this in the front. And then the backyard could be like this. And as you see, we're barely using any of the lot, barely even half of the lot. But when you use a smaller space like this, it gives you opportunity to actually have more. For example, you could turn this backspace right back here into some kind of communal children's playground. And you could like, I'm not, I'm not doing it for the purposes of this video, but what I'm saying is you can actually use one lot for multiple different purposes. If you just make your houses smaller, bigger is not always better in the Sims. So there is a website called colors.co. You click start generator. Now there is a paid version, okay, but you, you can literally use it for free, it's fine. It's just a lot more limited. So with this, it generates five colors. You click the space bar and it randomizes it to different kind of color schemes, which is really useful when designing your Sims 4 builds. You don't have to use this website, but I personally like to use it. You can also add multiple other ones or you can remove certain ones. Something I like to do with this, so you click the code at the bottom here and select a color. You can choose any color you like. So I would like my house to have some neutral beiges. So I'm going to lock this. And then when you click space again, it randomizes all of the other ones, but not this one. I think I'm gonna remove one actually. And as well as beige, I've decided I would like a kind of like a bluish color. So again, I'm going to lock this in. And now it edits the other two colors around this and there are literally tons of different kind of color combinations ideally what you want okay is to have maybe two vibrant colors and just a couple of neutrals as well so this one here we've got something called cambridge blue which looks more like green we've got a coral color we've got a beige and a white so we got green orange beige and white very pale so this living room is looking a little bit color clashy so everything can go. So our beige and white, our neutrals, come in the flooring and the walls. I guess this sofa has that corally pink, but it also has the green that was in that swatch. So we use that. We could maybe have a white chair here because it's not like an accent. This rug here has those like pale green undertones that we were looking for. Maybe these big green curtains, or is that a bit much? I don't know. When you build up a space with a certain color theme in mind, I just feel like it helps to make it look a lot more focused. And again, I just feel like this website is just really, really good for giving you that flexibility. I rarely ever see people use custom flooring in The Sims 4. Instead, they just place the flooring as default. So with your triangular bracket keys, you can actually rotate flooring around, meaning that you can really freely and easily change the pattern. So if you're creating a concrete flooring to go over to your house, if I shift this round on the rotation, you can see that I can either have big slabs, but if I rotate it the other way, they break down into smaller slabs. You can also use it to create unique designs. So with these tiles, you can literally just do a checkable pattern and it makes it look a little bit more interesting. Another great use is DIY carpet. So if you just can't find a carpet that you like, feel free to use the carpet as in like the flooring carpet and just literally use it as a rug. Like nobody's going to know any different. And of course there's different ones from different packs as well that you can use in certain situations. Another situation to use this for is a porch. So let me just change the color of this something lighter that I can Show you if it's vertical all the way around it doesn't look great so using the left bracket key we can actually make it different across each half now you're probably thinking satch this looks very jagged this doesn't look very nice right here so what we can do is if you press ctrl and f on your keyboard it immediately puts you in triangle mode and with triangle mode you have a lot more flexibility you can still even rotate it with triangle mode so with this triangular mode enabled we can actually 
actually add a more triangular look to this corner. And as you can see, the crossover between them is a lot more seamless. The triangles are also great for building like different kinds of garden paths. So you can really easily just merge certain sections of a path together, make it look a lot nicer. To be even like super psychedelic, okay, you could, instead of just doing the checkable pattern just like this, you could do a multi-tonal checkable pattern using the triangular key, using control and F just to make them all very slightly different from each other. There are literally loads of different kind of combinations that you can do to make it look really unique. And I feel like it's very undervalued by a lot of players. Most of us make a house and then move the family in, or you just don't have a family in mind at all. But having a family in mind is really important. Today, we're in the Growing Together World looking at the Michelson family, which have an infant and a child. Their house is relatively empty. Obviously, it's a base game build, but something that I've noticed is that even though we have an infant and a child, there's no toys. Now, when people build Sims 4 houses, they normally put all of the toys in the the kids bedroom they put literally every single toy in the kids bedroom but in real life you wouldn't do that in real life actually you probably have little kids toys scattered all around the house like some building blocks on the table here you probably have some toys chucked around on the floor rather randomly wouldn't you because your children would be very very messy and it would reflect in your house having all of these different random kids toys just kind of placed all over the floor and in completely random places you probably even have a, a little dollhouse maybe in the corner. You probably have a little random kids toy on your dining table. Yes, you would, because that's a lot more realistic because if you have a house for the kids and that's what you're going to do. When I built this specific house here, it's very pink. And the person I had in mind for living here was a bit of a obnoxious, insufferable, yummy mummy who wanted to make everything very, very pink, literally every single room. For the household that I'm putting in this house there's actually a boy in this room but the mum wanted him to have everything in pink because she's very selfish. In this house that I've been building in Dow Sol Valley the person that I've made to live in this house is actually a YouTuber. They got rich quick so the vibe that I went for in this house is just somebody who's got absolutely no taste but more money than they know what to do with. So we've got really ugly obnoxious like grey everything random modern things like a light up staircase. I'm pretty sure there's like a famous Minecraft YouTuber that literally sleeps like on a mattress on the floor because they just don't have any taste. You've got like a random night in this house and just like furniture that doesn't match. When you think about the person that's going to live in the house before you actually make the house, it allows you to go in with a more clear vision. The Sims 4 gallery is so underrated for the rooms category. So something that I've mentioned before, which I love, is if you search by rooms and then search for paintings, you have all of these paintings which are custom, but they're not CC. These paintings are not custom content. They're very cleverly done by using the paint by reference on the easel. So you can grab things like this and you can put them in your build. And now you have literally custom paintings, which are base game friendly, console friendly, and you can use these in your builds and in live mode you can actually frame all of these canvases there are literally tons of different options if you want a shop sign okay because you're making a shop you can download these off the gallery if you're making a shop and then put it in the front like there are so many different options another one i like is flower beds people make a lot of really nice flower beds so you can just pick like any one that you think you like the look of and then place it somewhere on your build and yes it is definitely Definitely like such a lazy way of going about it. But if you just want to quickly pop down a little flower bed somewhere, if you just want to quickly pop down a little flower bed somewhere in your Sims builds, just to give it something a little bit extra, you can do that. And it just adds a little bit more variety to the build itself. Another great thing is finding cars. If you literally search for cars, there are literally tons of different cars that you can choose from. If you want to make a driveway in your 
Sims house. I know there's technically a cheat called bb.show hidden objects, but I just find that clutters up build mode too much. So if you want to find certain random clutter objects, search it. Another thing you can do is if you search for kitchen clutter, you can see, oh my gosh, look at all of this. You can place this room down and it contains all the different clutter objects that you can think of for a kitchen, just really easily putting them all together so you can easily just drag it into the kitchen itself. And you can do this for literally any kind of room in the house, bathroom clutter. There we go. And we've just got all of these different clutter objects, including debug ones, like for example, this makeup blush, like there's literally so much. One of the biggest mistakes I see people do is they grab this subtle source of light and they place it all around the house to make it really, really bright everywhere. The problem with that is it all just looks a little bit ugly. Not ugly, it, it just doesn't have a vibe. This cozy little nook here, just by having a couple of subtle lights, it makes it feel a lot more cozy. Something that I want to show you for kitchens, which is great for lighting, is these upper cabinets here. Grab a wall light. Under the base game, we have one here, the Quetzal. That's a funny name. You can size it down very small and place it underneath the cabinets and it makes the illusion that the cabinets themselves are lit up and it just adds like a subtle light underneath your kitchen cabinets. Another undervalued thing is moot lighting. To do that unfortunately without mods you have to go into live mode which is very annoying. How could I have a simple video without Shanice Shanice? So in live mode we can actually click on lights and we can click set color and intensity of maybe we could do just all the lights in this room and you can see it comes up with this box where you can change the color of the lights and you can change the dimmer and you can change to any color you want you could have a bright white light in your rooms or you could make it more yellowish or orange and it adds for a lot of fun variety with a plain white light this room looks a little bit i don't know like industrial it's not very nice we could actually use a blue maybe and set it on the dimmer and it looks like night time in here all of the time. There's like a little nighttime reading nook or I could set it to like a deeper orange and make it look really, really cozy. I don't know why you'd want to set it to green. Maybe you're making like an occult house or like a horror house. I don't know. You can do that. There are so many combinations. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you might enjoy one of the next two videos recommended here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.